Since this video was made, the GoScan 50 is now called the Peel 2 3D Scanner. It's the exact same scanner as the GoScan 50. Uh, it's just a different name and a different color. But as far as features, accuracy, and software, it's exactly the same. We felt this video was still relevant. However, we just wanted to let you know it's now called the Peel 2 3D Scanner. Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the new GoScan 3D scanner from Creoform. Uh, and uh, basically, we're going to show a demo, in this case, for scanning things like bottles. Okay, so we're going to walk through scanning the bottle, um, some of the tools that you get in the collection software, and then we're going to take that into Geomagic XOS to show how we can clean it up, basically build a surface wrap solid model, and then export that for downstream CAD systems such as SOLIDWORKS. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, Creoform scanner. This is the GoScan. GoScan's been out for a couple years now. This is a new version that just came out um, and a couple significant uh, updates to the scanner. Uh, first thing is that now it has full 3D color. So as we're scanning, we can actually scan in color uh, and then export that color into uh, some different file formats. And uh, they've just improved it all around, uh, accuracy, resolution, uh, they've tightened up a little bit, so you're just getting better quality. Also, it comes in two models now, a uh, 50, which you see here, and a 20. Now, they look identical, and uh, the only real difference in them is the scanning volume. So, both of them collect about 550,000 points per second. Uh, as you're continuously scanning, so you're collecting a lot of data. The difference is, is the area that it scans. So for example, the 20 scans about a four inch volume. So you're taking 550,000 points into a four inch volume. So you're getting very dense, very tight points. This one has more of about a 15 inch volume. So the primary difference is what you would be scanning. So if you were doing small parts, real detailed, lots of fine features, that's where the GoScan 20 is a better scanner but it wouldn't be very good for large stuff because again, your scan window is very small. You'd have to move very, uh, you know, very slowly in very small areas. The GoScan 50 really could do small parts uh, all the way up to really car size, people are using this. The difference is you, you, know, you wouldn't have the real fine features. It just wouldn't pick them up like the 20 would. So the 50 is more popular because it's, it, it's a better all around scanner but it depends on your application. Again, if you're doing a lot of small stuff, that's a better scanner, small detailed stuff. So let's talk about how the scanner works. Now this is a projected light scanner. Um, if you haven't seen the original GoScan video, um, I would encourage you to watch that because we go into a lot of detail on, on the different ways it works. And this works identical to that. Um, the only difference now is the color. So what you have is a projector, projects out a light pattern, and at the same time, there's two sensors, one here and one here, that are actually looking at that projector, projected pattern and as it deforms over the shape of the part, that's how it's picking up the 3D shape. So it's literally taking a, a 3D image and then as you move, it takes another image and aligns them. So the advantage of this is you don't need targets, okay? Now you can use targets and certainly if I was trying to go down a wall that didn't have you know, really any features for it to align up each scan, you would have to have some targets. Uh, but a lot of things don't require targets as long as they have enough shape to them. So again, the light projects out a pattern, the sensors look at that shape and pick it up in 3D. Now what's new on this one is you have another sensor and that's the color camera, which at the same time is taking a color photo and aligning that to, this, to the 3D data. One advantage of that is if you do scan in color, you can actually tell it to also use the color features of the part to align to. So for example, on this bottle, you can see there's a lot of different colors and text that it's gonna pick up and it can actually use that in the alignment process. So it's kind of like targets, basically. Um, so that's one advantage of color. Now you can buy this without color. If it's, the scanner looks identical. The difference is, is there just won't be a, uh, a color you know, sensor in here. Um, you can add it later. There's an upgrade charge to do it. So it's, it's it, because they, you've got to send it back. They've got to install it. Um, if you buy it with color, it's, it's a little cheaper because again, they're gonna install it right from the factory. Very lightweight, very portable, USB cable. You get a nice long cable and extremely easy to use as you're gonna see. So let's go ahead and scan and I'll kind of talk as we're, we're scanning along. So the VX Element software, which is the collection software, uh, continu continues to improve. There's a lot of new enhancements in that software. 
Um, but basically, you just hold the part about 15 inches away. I'll just kind of grab it by the handle, try to keep my, my hand out of the uh, field of view. Uh, it's all line of sight, like all scanners, and it's kind of like digital spray painting. I just kind of move my way around, just kind of go, you know, at a, at a speed that it can keep up. Okay, and you, it's hard probably to see on the screen, but we're scanning in full 3D color. Okay, you can see I'm just kind of going up and down. It's all line of sight, so you basically just have to, you know, scan everywhere that you want data. And you can see to get to the bottom, I just slowly roll around. And just kind of move, and then I'm going to get over here on the other side. And if it gets lost in position, you just kind of go back to a, to, to a last known location. Okay. Now to do the uh, to do the rest, I'm going to put it on this little cap. That'll just keep it off the table. So if we pick up any data as far as on the table, it just makes it easier to separate. And you'll see that here in the software in a minute. So again, just go back to a known spot. Let's go up and get the top of the bottle. Try to keep my hand. It's not the end of the world if I scan my hand. It's easy enough to clean up, but. Um, Get the top from this side, and then let's get up underneath the handle. So that's always a difficult spot because of line of sight, and really we're just trying to aim and get in there. And it may be, you know, not possible to scan every area, and uh, that's where we might have to go do some cleanup. But we're going to try to get as much of it as we can. So we're getting quite a bit of data up under the handle, and that's really it. So you know, probably less than a minute. We can scan the bottle. Let's go ahead and hit stop scan and I'll kind of explain what this is doing. So what the scanner is doing underneath is collecting points. That's what all scanners collect is points. What we're doing now is actually converting those points to polygons, which are basically triangles. Um, and then we're applying that color uh, to those triangles. Uh, so basically wrapping those textures or images on that model. So it takes a little bit of work, um, you know, depending on the um, uh, resolution that we have set. Uh, we're set at two millimeters right now. We can go on this scanner all the way down to a half a millimeter. So there's our bottle. Let's zoom in. You can see the color. We can adjust the color from about 70 all the way up to uh, 120 DPI. Um, and that'll just give you better color. And we can set the triangle size all the way down to a half a millimeter. Um, so it'll depend on your application. Um, and then you kind of see this floating data. We've got some nice tools in here. One's called Remove Isolated Patches. That's basically anything floating out in space. And part of the reason I put the cap here, so if we do pick up the table, it's not connected to the bottle. One push of a button and all that data's gone, okay? So just little tricks you, you learn over time. We can also fill in holes. Um, we've got a, a few options here to try to clean up the scan data and might make it as nice as possible. Um, also, I'll turn the texture off. And then you can see what the bottle looks like without any color data. Color data is nice, certainly, but you don't need it or may not require it. It'll work just fine without it. You can see we've still picked up a high quality scan. You can actually see the wrinkles in the label of the bottle. Right in here, there's a lot of wrinkles. And you can see it's picked up that right in the scan data. So once we're done with this, we're going to export it. Um, there's a few different formats. If we don't care about color, we would just probably do an STL. If we want color, we can do OBJ or Ply or Vermal. There's some different color options there. We're going to export that. Then we're going to take it into Geomagic uh, XOS or DesignX. In this case, we're going to show XOS. And we're going to show how to surface wrap this into a solid body that then can go into any CAD system where it's basically going to be a, a solid manifold and you can use it for downstream CAD or manufacturing operations. Okay, so here we are in Geomagic XOS, and this product allows us to import scan data from really any scanner. Uh, in this case, obviously, the Creaform GoScan, and you can see it brings in the color data from the OBJ, Vermal, and other files. Uh, we exported it with a 2 millimeter triangle size and a uh, 75 uh, DPI for the color. Um, you can go tighter resolutions on both those if required, um, down to a half a millimeter on the uh, polygon size and up to um, 120 to 150 on the DPI size. So um, for our application, uh, what we have here is just fine. So you can rotate it around, see the color uh, data, and it looks quite nice. Now for our application, we don't really need, uh, need the color. It's certainly nice, but uh, we're going to turn it off and look at the raw scan data. 
So you can see the wrinkled uh, from the uh, label that was on the bottle. There's a few holes and some other things. So we're going to clean this up and turn this into CAD data. And that's what uh, Geomagic XOS does quite well. So um, we want to do a few things and we're going to walk through those. Because ultimately what we want to do is export an IGES step or parasolid file that can go into a CAD system. And right now this is just polygon data. And polygon data, if you zoom in, is really just a bunch of triangles. Uh, most CAD systems can't work with it. So what we're going to do is clean it up, fill in the holes, uh, smooth out the data, and then we're going to do a command called auto surface, which is basically going to put a quilted patch of nerve surfaces uh, around this entire bottle. And as long as it's watertight, that'll be a solid body that we can export and bring into a CAD system. Now for our application, we're just designing things around this. So we don't need a feature-based solid model. We just need kind of a big, dumb uh, solid body that represents this shape that we can cut sections or basically extract information off, OK? So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is clean up this uh, mesh. Now, the, in order to do that, all we need to do is double click on the mesh data. Um, and we select a tool. I'm going to get into a side view. So for example, the bottle had a dispenser on the top. We really don't need that. Uh, for our application. Now we could have taken it off, uh, but we kind of used it as a nice handle. But basically what we're going to do is just basically draw an outline of an area I want on the scan data and trim it out, as you see there. Then I'm going to do a hole fill, and I'm going to select that boundary, and we'll do a flat hole in this case, and it's just going to fill that in for us. Okay. Some other things we can do is what we call virtual sandpaper. Um, again, I'm going to use this brush, and I could come in to uh, different areas, I can adjust the size of it. And basically, I'm going to try to smooth out uh, the scan data. So where we had those rough spots, maybe just try to smooth that out a little bit. You know, any dimples or hard edges we don't want, um, we, could, uh, we could smooth out uh, on it. Because again, the scanner is going to pick up everything. Uh, sometimes there's things on the, the bottle we just don't want. Now, a couple other, we've got a couple divots here. I could certainly try to sand those down. or use a command like D feature, uh, and let's zoom in and adjust our brush size. But basically, I'm going to select the triangles there and there. And it's basically going to delete those triangles and then automatically fill that area in, in this case with curvature-based hole filling. So we've got another one here. Uh, we can run that command again. So that's, that's a nice command just to get rid of kind of bumps. And again, we could go back and, and uh, smooth this out a little more if we prefer and try to get that really flat. Um, this will be good enough here for our application. Just kind of soften it up. And then finally, we've got one more hole up in this area. Uh, let's pick this. This time we'll do curvature-based hole filling. Kind of follow the shape of that handle a little bit and fill that in. And then finally, uh, we'll smooth that out under there a little bit because, again, we've got some rough spots. Primarily because the scanner probably just couldn't see well under there. Uh, it's a tight fit. Again, scanners are all line of sight. But you can see, you know, what I can't get with the scanner, I can certainly clean up digitally um, here in the, in the system. Okay? So that looks pretty good. We now have a watertight uh, STL mesh that looks quite, quite nice. And really our next step is going to be uh, auto-surfacing this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, exit out of there, and we'll go ahead and do our auto-surfacing. Okay, so for the auto surfacing, we're going to take the uh, bottle and go to the auto surface command. There's a couple of ways we can generate these surface patches. Uh, we tend to use the feature following network. It, it makes fewer uh, patches and makes them more intelligently. And there's a few different settings. We typically go with some defaults here. Uh, uh, patch complexity, we kind of leave low. And then accuracy is basically how tight do you want the surfaces to wrap on the model. If you go really tight, you can get some waviness. If you go too loose, uh, you know, you just don't accurately follow the bottle. So let's go ahead and um, get it started, and we'll talk more about it. So what it's doing initially is building a patch, a network patch of surfaces, and trying to fit four-sided triangles uh, through the entire um, uh, uh, model here. And uh, it's going give to give us a preview of those patches. Um, in case we want to make any changes, and then once we say yes, it's going to go ahead and fit surfaces through all of those patches. So you get to see the patches first, and we can do some editing of those patches, um, and, uh, and then we can continue. 
So you can see in the flat areas, you got nice big patches, and then when you have more curvature, um, you have more patches to control that. Now, you see this red area here, it's telling us we have one patch that just isn't um, good, and there's different things we can do, split, merge, etc. Usually if I just tug on it a little bit, um, pull it one way or the other, um, that red goes away. It just doesn't like sometimes the corners, and usually a quick uh, uh, tug using this deform command or a split command, and, um, and it fixes it. So usually there might be one or two of these in a typical model, uh, sometimes none. Once you fix that, it's basically telling us it's ready to create the surface body. So there we go. There it is. Let's go ahead and hide our mesh. And what you see here is a solid body. Okay, And you can see it's followed the shape. Let's turn the edge lines off just for a minute. And you can see it definitely follows the shape of the uh, scan data quite well. Um, I'll turn the edges back on. But this is now, if you look over here, this is a solid body. So this can be exported. Um, for example, if I go export and select it, my options include IGIS, STEP, Parasolid, ASICS, um, and even some direct CATIA formats. So uh, you can't do that with scan data. Uh, for example, if I were to turn the scan data back on and I hit export, I won't have those options because there is no mathematical surfaces. I could only do things like STL. So that's why we have to surface it. Uh, and again, as long as it's watertight, it becomes a solid body. So this now will go directly into SOLIDWORKS, Pro Engineer, CATIA, Solid Edge, Autodesk Inventor, uh, really uh, any product that they can import, I just step or pair solid. So um, just to kind of wrap this up, we did a quick scan of a bottle, didn't take very long at all, did some minor editing to the data, and then we did a surface wrap model through it, which basically because it's watertight makes it a solid body that then we can export take into any CAM product or CAD product for downstream design um, uh, or other applications, mold building, tool building, uh, automation equipment, whatever you have, you now have a very high quality, accurate representation of the bottle.